Hey everybody, I am Stacy. I am the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy, And I'm just gonna give it a sec, make sure I'm live here before I really get started. Um, so, sometimes I've been having some issues where I'm not really live, even though I show I'm live. Um, so I just wanna make sure, let's see here. And it's particularly been happening on this page. So, right now so if anyone is on can you just say hey where you're watching from let me know you can see me um i'm still i don't actually think i'm live i let's see here oh i might be coming up let me just a sec nope still not showing the video so ah here we go so i'm on live i'm just gonna give Whoops. it a sec here we go, it just started over for me. There's a slight delay, so sometimes that's why I don't see your comments. Okay, so I do see one person on. Hey, Patty. Um, so today, and by the way, again, I'm Stacy. I'm the owner and artist with New Creations by Stacy. I'm a Dixie Belle elite retailer here in Ardmore, Alabama at the Rustic Willow. And then I also have my location here in Madison as well. Um, so today we're going to be working with silk uh, in a couple different colors. We're going to be kind of creating a cool streaky effect. And um, before we start that, though, let me just give you some information in the description. I do have my page listed. So if you guys think of any questions, definitely ask them. If you think of them after the live, you can click that link. You can send me a message. Also, please just like and follow me on Facebook. If you know anyone who could use the information in this video as we're going, please share it with them. Um, and then also you can find your local retailer. I have my affiliate link listed. You can order products there online or you can, once you click that link in the top left hand corner, um, it'll say find your local retailer. Just click that. You can put in your zip code and find somebody near you if you want to go in and ask questions and, and see all of the products in person as well. Um, and that's always nice, I think. But um, we'll go ahead and get started now. I might have forgotten something, so I'll probably just, hey, Thelma, she's local here. Um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. And then if I think of anything else, I'll just say it as we're painting. But um, so silk, you generally see it used. It's, it's amazing for a one color finish. Um, it's got a stain blocker a protectant and the paint built all in one. So it cuts out a lot of steps. Um, it's not really made for blending, which is a lot of what I do. Um, and this morning when I pulled out my paint colors, I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use. So I decided to use both of them. So like I said, we're, I don't wanna call this blending because it's not. We're actually just kind of streaking and layering in the two colors. Um, and we're going with deep sea, which is this nice in the navy color. Here's the actual container for it, so you can see. And then we are also gonna go with Cape Current, which is this gorgeous, pretty um, blue color. It's quite a bit lighter. Um, so we're gonna start with that. And then just to give you an idea of where we're going with this, and I've got everything out, I don't know how far we'll get. Um, but I did have a request to do some lining with the mousse. Um, so we're going to go ahead and line out this section here. I probably won't do a lot of it um, because it is kind of slow and tedious work sometimes. Um, but this way, I'll give you a couple different ways that you can line out those sections with mousse. And then if we have enough time, I do have a silkscreen stencil um, to go in this section here. Uh, with the mousse, and then I have our Espresso No Pain Gel Stain too. So if there's something in particular in all of these steps that you want to see, um, just let me know because I can kind of change up what direction we go with that. Um, so let's get started so we can get as much done as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I've been using this, so I've already shaken it. Um, these are just Bifo bottles I keep my paint in so I'm not painting out of the jar and getting it all clumpy. Um, this does not take a lot so you can kind of see how much I'm putting on the plate. I'm also going to bring you guys in a little bit closer so that hopefully um, you can have a better view of what I'm doing here. Let's put a little more of that on. There you go. 
So just to give you an idea too of the prep, I went ahead and cleaned this with white lightning. I, well, I did actually strip the top. Um, I used citrus strip, and then I just did a light sanding with a 220 grit sandpaper to smooth it out. Cleaned this with white lightning, rinsed it down with water. Um, on the inside, I do have some felt. So if I was painting with the chalk mineral paint, I would have needed to boss it if I was going with a light color. But this has a built-in blocker, so that's going to cover that. It's also a dark color, so I'm not really going to see it anyway. So that's a, a good thing. It's a plus with the silk. Um, so with the silk paint, you do not use water. We're just starting with my brush here. My brush is pretty dry, but I've kind of been using it already today. So it's just a tiny bit damp, but that's not going to hurt anything. Um, you do typically want to stick with a dry brush, though, with silk. So let me go ahead and I'm actually gonna get on the floor here too. Like I said, on this side over here, I've actually got the two coats on there because we're gonna do some of those advanced steps. I'm gonna pop you guys down too. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing with the plate because some of these colors I am mixing on the plate. Um, so I kinda want you to be able to see what I'm doing there. Um, and I'll try to raise it up and show you. So I'm going to go ahead and start on, let me just get all my paint out of the way before I spill something. I'm going to go ahead and start on this side over here. Um, and this does have one coat on it. And one thing I want to, um, well, I just forgot what I was going to say there. It was something I had forgotten earlier. But the bottom section here, I'm just doing in the deep sea. Oh, hey, Nancy from Buffalo. All right, so I'm keeping this one color. I only dipped it in my deep sea. And, oh, silk goes on amazing. It glides right over that first coat. Um, you don't have any pull with the silk, very little paint still. Um, it goes a long way. But this bottom section, I just want it all dark. So this is just gonna be in deep sea. I'm gonna bring this deep sea up a little higher too. And then that's when we're gonna start mixing it up a little bit. And I'm only going in two directions here. Um, because you're not using water, you're gonna have a little less time to um, work the silk paint than you would if you use our chalk mineral line. All right, so this bottom section is done. Now I wanna start bringing in my other colors. So if you can see my plate here. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna bring some of this deep sea over and you can see I have some on my brush. And then I'm gonna, on the other side of my brush where I don't have it, not that it really matters because a little later on um, you'll see me doing it any which way. But, so on my brush, one side I've got the deep sea, the other side I've got the cape current, and I've mixed them together a little bit in the middle as well. So now, I'm purposefully going horizontally because I kind of want to get it mixed in a little bit, create that color, and then I'm just going to lightly feather up, bring my brush stroke up. And I'm using the same brush for everything. I'm gonna dip just a tiny bit in my deep sea because I wanna bring that shadowing up a little bit on the side. And this time, I'm gonna still bring in a little cape current. So I've got dipping my brush just a tiny bit in there, same side, brought in a lot more cape current. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go sideways, get it a little bit in there. And Again, not a lot of work time. So you're just doing very small sections at once. And again, light feather, you want nice long strokes. I got just a little bit of the darker um, deep sea in here. Now I'm gonna just take some of the kink current and I'm gonna come up under here. Um, cause now I'm going to start meeting in the middle. I'm using one brush. So this is still a little darker up here. 
than it would be if I just had the Cape Current because I've still got some of that excess deep sea on here. I'm not worried about getting anything along the top. I'll be able to go back in. So now I've only taken Cape Current, the lighter blue, and I'm gonna go ahead and brush this in. Same thing, lighter Cape Current only. I'm gonna brush it in. And again, you wanna work quickly. So if you're working on a large section, you're gonna have to work in little tiny steps. So now I just dipped my brush in a little bit of deep sea and I'm kind of bringing this together. I got a little too much on there, but that's okay. I'll just, if it's too dark, darker than what I want, then I'll just streak in a little more Cape Current. So as this dries, it's gonna look very, very streaky because it dries at different times. I'm gonna just take a little bit more down here and I'm gonna go with a light hand because this is already drying. If I go too heavy down here, it's gonna pull back some of that first coat. Hey, Amber, it's gonna pull back some of that first coat. So very light hand. So this isn't a true blend. I'm just streaking in multiple colors here. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now, I've got a little spot up here I wanna get a little bit more on. I don't have a lot of time. I'm mixing up the deep sea and the Cape Current on my plate and I'm coming down like this with it. I just wanted a little bit darker right there. So as it dries, you'll actually get the true effect of what that's gonna look like. So by the end of this video, it'll be dry. It won't look as streaky and you'll be able to see how it really comes together. And like I said, that other side is already done. Um, so you can kind of tell that difference. So now we're gonna come around to the front. We're gonna do the same thing pretty much on the front here. Um, I have this panel done, but I think I might wanna touch this up a little bit here. I might want it a little bit lighter. So same thing, we're gonna go with the deep C and see about how much I have on here. And this I'm gonna just take across the bottom because I want my bottom pretty dark. You can see where it's a little bit lighter. Um, so that's why I'm going all the way across. It's a little bit lighter because I'm using the same brush for everything. And then we're gonna take the deep C. I wanna come up a little bit on the sides. My color is being laid out as I'm going. There is no point where I really kind of laid out this color of exactly how I wanted it. Um, it's just kind of looking at my piece and seeing where I want my colors. Let's see here. So now we're gonna go ahead, take a little bit of the deep sea, take a little bit of the Cape Current, and we're gonna start working that in here. Bring some of that Cape Current over. And you see in this section, I'm just going up and down. This is a very linear um, area here, so I really don't have that option to try to mix it in horizontally. Same thing down here, more of the deep sea and the Cape Current on the same brush. And then we're just gonna blend that in the center a little bit. I'm hesitant to use the word blend because it's not the same type of blending that you would see me do with a chalk mineral paint. But now we're gonna go straight Cape Current down from the top, maybe a little bit of dark because we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come down from the top now. And you know, this paint also dries much darker than it looks, um, which you can, I'm sure you can tell here. It dries much darker than it looks in the jar or on the plate. So I'm just bringing that Cape Current, making sure I'm getting in all these little grooves here. And this silk just glides on. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna bring a little bit lighter over here. So for that, I'm gonna do a little bit of this because this section's already dry, so I, I don't wanna go too far over, but I do want to get a little bit lighter 
just in this section here. And I can kind of still do a little dry brush over these areas, very light, just highlighting the edges. That's always gonna give your piece a little bit more dimension um, as you go along. So that's it, we're pretty much done with the painting here. I'm gonna run a little bit, just looking at my piece, seeing areas that might wanna touch up. Just ran a little bit of deep sea down here, bring it up a little bit. And yeah, I think I'm happy with how this looks. What do you guys think? Let's see, hey, Amber, doing similar colors. Oh, thanks, Amber. So Amber said about, um, you know, so you'll hear, don't blend silk, don't blend silk. And I kind of felt the same way, Amber. <laughs> I wanted to try it but i've just been really reluctant um but today i had these two colors and i thought why not i'm going for it um so of course that's why i really did the two coats on that side just to make sure that i would like it um, before i went live and did it but you can see it doesn't take a whole lot of paint i've still got a lot left and i didn't pour a lot out oh thanks um so that's it i'm gonna go ahead and Mist down uh, my brush now, and this time I've actually still forgotten um, a Ziploc bag. So normally, since I can't wash my brush out right away, I put it in a Ziploc bag to keep it. Um, but I just misted it down pretty well, and I'm gonna set it back here on a paper towel. And um, silk washes out of your brush, amazing. I don't know if you guys have tried it. Uh, has everyone watching today tried silk, or is it? still new for you um it washes out of your brush so easy i can get almost all the paint out of my brush before i even use the scrubby soap so it's amazing um so now we're gonna go ahead we're gonna hit the garnet um so that i can make sure that i get this in here uh so this is the gemstone mousse it's water-based um, and we have four colors in metallic. I've used quite a bit of mine and I do paint. I do paint. This is why you don't paint out of the little things. See that little chunk of dried up stuff? That's from me painting out of my jar. So, um, and it's been a little while since I've used this color, but I'm just going to use my finger to kind of, actually, I'm going to be able to mix that all back in and not waste it. Um, Sometimes I get those in my paint when I paint out of the jar. That's why I quit. But I am going to go ahead and stir this up because it's been a little bit since I've used it. But you saw that chunky spot. I think I'm actually going to be able to stir that in. And I'm going to add a little bit of water because it did dry up. So that's really normal. Especially, so I'm going to tell you, with the gemstone mousse, um, People always think something is wrong with the gold. And I've got that up too, just in case I decide to do a blend. See how it's got that weird green yuck, yucky color? You just put a little water in here, mix it up because it's a little bit chunky. It'll get really nice and smooth. And when it goes on and dries, it's a gorgeous bright gold. It doesn't have that little green tint or anything else. Um, and that just has to do with gold pigments. Um, it's nothing else. So I just added a couple more squirts and we're gonna mix that together so I get the right consistency and get rid of the chunk, chunks. And we are ready to go. And this stuff goes a long ways. It only comes in a one ounce container, um, but you can, really, um, you can really stretch it out. I've had this one since it came out. So, detail work that's where we're at right now um actually i'm going to drop you guys down a little bit more oh thelma if you're doing a one color finish you would love it and actually you would love the blues they have because i know you're a huge fan of the bunker hill blue and some of the other blues um truly gorgeous let's see here so we've got it down a little bit further hopefully you can see 
and these corners that I'm going to be working on. So, of course, um, let me get everything down here. There we go. So there's several different ways to really do your detail work. Um, taping it off is, oh yeah, Amber, I've used it a lot. Um, so sometimes, well, this isn't a Dixie Well product, but the Amber, let me just say, the Amber and the Gold mixed together, that particular color matches a lot of golds that you find um, and some other like embellishment products that you can put on your piece. So I do mix those two together quite a bit. Um, that's actually mostly how I use the garnet. But I decided, I don't use it very frequently, so I decided to go ahead and um, do just garnet today. And I thought it'd be pretty with this blue. I hope it is. Otherwise, I may end up mixing it up. And golden gem mousse, or the gemstone mousse blends really well too, so you can take it from one color to the next. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just going to show you a few different ways um, to kind of paint a straight line or do, you know, these kind of trim pinstripe things. Um, so the first thing you want is an artist brush and you want one that is has the angle on it um, because this this little point right here is the point that you want to keep on where you want the straight edge. So you definitely want a brush like this. Um, I actually have a different one that I prefer using because this one is out of shape. You can see how it's, it's lost its flatness. So this one does not paint as well like that. Um, and I think actually what I'm going to do since I couldn't find it is we're going to try to make one right quick. Otherwise I'm going to have to go back to use the one I don't really want to use. That's, um, a little overused. Yeah, me too, Amber. Those are totally my colors too. <laughs> So let's see. So I'm just going to cut it at an angle. Um, I mean, I'm not necessarily recommending you make your own. You can go to Hobby Lobby. That didn't work out very well either. Um, but you can go to Hobby Lobby and just buy one. Had I had time today, I would have. Let me try one more cut here. Yeah, that's not really working. I cut off a lot of my chip brushes um, and use them as wax brushes. It's a great reuse but this definitely doesn't work to make your own angle brush. So we're going to use this one. So I want to, when I'm painting a straight line like that, I do always start with a wet brush. I also have a little towel here so that I can keep my brush cleaned off. So when you want to paint a straight artistic line, a, a clean brush is really important. So right now I'm just trying to shape it out and flatten it out since I've got a little bit of an issue. All right, so couple different ways to do this. One way is to tape it off. So I'm going to, of course, demonstrate that. Another way, it's a lot of work taping off a curve like this. The only time I really do that if I'm doing spindles and a stain. Otherwise, it's just too much to tape it off. So I'm just going to, we're going to freehand this one and I'll show you some tips and tricks there. And then I'm also going to use like a little business card and show you kind of a cheater way to do it too. But you still have to be a little careful. So first thing, tape. Of course, you don't have to be careful. You want to keep a very small, 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 small amount of paint on your brush. And I'm going to be careful of my interior line there. Um, and I keep my hand resting on my piece. The reason I keep it resting on my piece, it's going to make you really steady. So there you go. You can see a little bit of paint. Rest my hand on the piece put my brush down and drag my brush. I never lift it off. I'm just dragging it down in one direction. So you can see, you can see why we're not doing this whole thing on here. It is a slow, tedious process, but I actually love to stick on a book and just do this. This is actually one of my favorite steps, <laughs> even though it's slow and tedious. So a little bit more. So now I'm going to show you. See how my brush is opening up in the middle like that? It's losing its shape. I want to stop, spray it at that point, and I don't know if you can see, but and wipe it off on my towel so I can bring that shape back together. 
And then I'm gonna dip it in my gemstone mousse again. And we're gonna go along this line here. And you can take the inside and the outside. I didn't take the inside here um, because I'm not actually going to tape off this section. I just kinda wanted to show you, you know, how you can tape that off. Um, so, I'm wiping that off again just because my brush is getting really out of shape. So now the next way to do it is freehand. Most of the time I do freehand as well. So you keep the, see how your brush, the angle, the pointed angle, you lay your hand down. You're not gonna move your hand. You want that steadiness. You lay your brush down and you just follow the curve around. You never pick your brush up, you never pick your hand up. That's all it is, you're just, this doesn't take skill, it's just knowing how to lay your hand and drag your brush, that's it. And sometimes, you know, as you're dragging your brush, you get to the end, it's a little lighter, you just come back with a little bit more, lay your hand, lay your brush, and drag it down and around. You just keep that steady flow going. Make sure you keep your brush nice and wet. And same thing, lay my hand down, drag it around. Okay, so now I'm coming to the other side and I need to keep that corner up here like this, lay my hand down, lay my brush, and drag it around. Never moving. And it is kind of hard when you're going the opposite, you know, the opposite direction here. Um, but you just drag, so that way it's never a question of remaining steady. And that's why you're using a brush like this as well. And when you just drag and don't lift up, you have a nice, straight, smooth line. So that's all that is. So another way that you can kind of cheat, per se, a little bit, and what I'm gonna do is just spray this off again, wipe it on my paper towel here, and put a little more of the gemstone mousse on. Let me fix this little section here, and then I'm gonna kind of show you another way without taping that you can do a little cheating on. So this is, by the way, this is a very, very wide section here. So I'm also gonna have to come in, so I'm doing it this way. I'm gonna have to come in, flip my brush around and go along the inside as well. Not gonna do that right now. I just kinda wanna show you guys how to do this. Oh, thanks, Amber. Um, so again, just spraying it off a little bit, wiping it down. So you can take a business card. And let's say I'm worried that my line is not gonna be perfect. Hey, let me point out something too. This has a built-in protectant. So normally if I'm using chalk mineral paint, I'm gonna protect it and then I'm gonna do these steps. This has a built-in protectant so I don't have to do it. It's not as porous as chalk paint. So if I accidentally make a mark down the center of this thing, all I have to do is take a baby wipe and wipe it off. If you don't have baby wipes, you can use like a lint-free towel and just water, wipe it off. Um, oh, hey, Teresa, it's good to see you on here. Oh, thank you, I am feeling so much better. Where did you get your furniture doll? Oh, this, I actually, I buy everything at an estate sale. I really don't shop anywhere else. Um, but you can get them. Um, I did have a set I purchased a while back from Harbor Freight. Uh, you can order them online from um, like Home Depot or Lowe's too, I know. The store here though, I never really can find anything like this in stock. So like, let's say you just want to, so this is another way. You don't want to tape it off. That's just time consuming. I always like to do things the fastest, quickest way. Not the anything with this is fast, but <laughs> with the details. But you can lay the business card down here. Just make sure it's got a nice flat. And you can go along here. You do wanna be a little bit careful though, 
just because you don't have that same type of surface. By the way, I just flipped my brush around so the point's on the other side to clean that up. I wasn't paying attention there. Um, let me just clean that up a little bit there too. I want it nice and straight. So you can put this business card down and you can pull this out and see, I might actually touch up that one little spot because I wasn't being very careful when I first put my brush down and you're, you can't even really see it. I'm just being particular. Honestly, it would be fine if I didn't touch it up, but I have a little spot that I don't like how far it came over. Um, but you know, it's an easy way if you feel uncomfortable that you're not steady, that you can keep from getting it just all over your piece. Um, and I'm actually just, I'm gonna fix this really quick. So right now I'm going along the inside. I'm gonna freehand this though. This is actually my preference is to freehand it. On occasion, I'll tape it off if it's an easy tape off job. But a lot of times taping it off is just super time consuming. And before I actually do this again, I'm going to find my better brush or go buy another one. Because you really want your brush to have its shape still. You don't want it to be, this is one of my older ones. So it's just a little out of shape there. But that's how you, that's the different ways. Let me pull this tape off so you can see that clean line that it creates. And I don't know, I can't really tell much of a difference from where I went from here to freehand, maybe a little bit. Um, so if I, what I will probably actually do, if you guys wanna kinda know how I will do this, I will probably go ahead and put a tape on the inside here and here um, to keep that line on the inside nice and crisp. This one has a little ledge, so it's gonna be easy to freehand on this side. So that's probably how I'll end up doing it when I'm not on a live and not um, going through like the different ways to do it. All right, so we've got some time left. Um, I have enough time to either do a silk screen stencil or we can stain the top right quick. Um, just let me know, yes, an angle brush, thank you. I, for some reason I couldn't remember what it was called. I kept just saying the pointy thing. Um, I think that's just my day, but. <laughs> So anyway, that is that. Um, so let me know, I'm a little slow on the comments, but let me know if you wanna see the no pain gel stain or if you prefer the silk screen stencil with the mousse here. Um, so I haven't gotten anybody going yet. Um, I've actually done both of these things recently. Let's go with espresso. I haven't stained on a live with espresso, I don't think. So um, if you, if you wanna see something else though, comment and I can always switch it up really quick. I'm gonna raise you guys back up so you can see the top of the piece. And actually I haven't done it with an applicator pad too. So that's how we're gonna do it on this one because I do want it to be a little bit dark and thicker. So we've got the view of the top, and this is a pretty quickie. Um, and I do have, um, if you follow me on my Facebook page, I do have some videos um, that show kind of how to strip it. Um, which I like to do everything the easiest way possible, so it's not really time consuming or even a really long video. Um, my Express is kind of old and dinged up here, but let me get this open. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm loving how the silk kind of, you know, streaks in. Um, I, I'm definitely going to be using this on more pieces. I have a problem, though, with choosing colors. Sometimes I'll choose like three or four colors, and then I end up switching the colors after the first coat. I'm just, I love all the colors too much. Um, I wanna say I have too many choices, but I love them. All right, so I didn't get another plate out. Um, it's not really good to stain out of, your, out of your container, just because you can see all this buildup I have around here. You wanna make sure you get a good seal 
when you put the lid back on. Otherwise, you can get like this little leathery thing that comes across the top of your paint. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up. So oil products, you definitely, sometimes they can separate, so you wanna stir them really well. And these go a long way. It is, like I said, it is oil-based. Um, it is a gel stain, so you don't have to strip first. I just like the nice, clean look when you strip it. Um, I don't know. I just like, I, I like it to go on raw wood. Um, but you can put it straight over a finish. Um, and a lot of people do that. Uh, let's see. All right, so we're going to apply this with an applicator pad. So with the oil, and actually I think I have one in the freezer, but I didn't grab it. With the oil based, it's not soap and water cleanup. Um, so the only way to really clean it up is mineral spirits, but those are, these are so cheap and inexpensive. You can toss them. And if you do a lot of staining, I actually put mine in a Ziploc bag, get a lot of the air out, and then I keep them in the freezer. Um, they don't last as long as my brushes, but they do last and I can use them for multiple stains. You know, normally I wear gloves too because this is a not an easy cleanup off your hand. Um, hold on, I've got some gloves in here. Clearly I wasn't as prepared for this live. <laughs> but I had to run up to all the stores today and kind of got back just in time. So we're just going to take a little bit of... That's a lot, but just a little bit of the stain and we're gonna start wiping it on. So a lot of times when you, I normally don't apply with an applicator pad. I think on all the lives, um, I usually apply with a brush and then wipe it back. And that's when I'm going for a specific look. But when I want it kind of thicker, um, I will tend to use an applicator pad when I want it to look more rustic um, and a little, you know, multiple colors. I will tend to use a, um, I will tend to use a brush and wipe back. I just can, it goes on a little bit thinner. And with this, um, with the stain, let's see here. With the stain, you have a lot of work time because it's an oil-based product. So, you know, you can go in different directions or kind of take your time when you're working with it. Your final pass, though, you do want to go with the grain of the wood. Um, you can apply this directly to your raw wood. You can condition it first. If you condition your wood, it does take it a little bit better. Um, I don't usually condition because even though I'm going for an elegant look on here, I just like the multiple colors and all that good stuff. You do, on your final pass, wanna go with the green and in long strokes so that you don't end up with, like I call them smudgies, but um, you can get little smudgies on here. And so once you finish this too, um, oil-based, so, you know, the weather affects a lot how this dries and it dries for everybody kind of differently. And um, if you're not familiar with this product and when you're protecting with a water-based stain over it, I absolutely say wait three to five days. And I do actually wait three to five days, but I know a lot of people who protect over it much sooner. Um, you know, if you're outside, if you're in a high humidity area, Different things like that are gonna affect the dry time, so some people can do it a little bit sooner. I hear that in Arizona, it goes really fast. Uh, so I always wait three to five days. I just get paranoid, I sell my furniture, I wanna make sure that it's right. Um, and that there's no problems. Just kind of scrubbing my ex, I got some excess on here. Um, and just kind of scrubbing that in. But you can see how long the work time with this is. Um, you can blend this stuff just like you do paint. You just can't, you have to keep oil with oil, um, but it doesn't work well with Big Mama's Butter. That can take it right off. 
You can use it, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're not really familiar with the products um, by any means, because it is tricky. I've done it, but it is tricky. So we've got just a little bit more that we need to get on over on this side. Then I'll pull you guys back so you can kind of get an idea of the overall look here. I doubt I'm gonna have time for silk screen. I'm probably coming up pretty quick on the end here. And I do have some pictures to post too of what we did last on the silk screen. It's all done, just brought it to the store today. I've got the final pictures done. I just need to write up um, everything about it and add the links for the live videos, but I'll be having that out on my page fairly soon here. This piece probably won't be finished till next week because it's gonna be at least five days before I protect it. So you won't see this finished piece for a little bit. All right, so really like how that turned out. Um, okay, so I see a little smudgy over here, so I'm actually just gonna take a little bit more stain I'm gonna go over that section. And even though I only wanted to fix that spot, I'm gonna bring it all the way across so it's nice and smooth. And it's kind of wiping back to a little bit as I do this. And then since I went over the edge, we're just gonna go back around here. Now, I'm doing this with my clean side because I wanna pull most of that that I just put on right back on the edge. So, when you're wiping it with the side you already have the stain on, it's really just spreading it around, moving it around, wiping it in. When I wipe it with this side, it's actually taking it off on the clean side. So loving, 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 loving how that looks. And perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now I can, um, so the time to put on another coat where everybody should be fine if you're not as familiar with using the product, if you wanna put on a second coat, which I actually may do to deepen this up, um, technically 24 hours for that second coat. However, depending on where you're at, how it dries, um, I have put on a second coat after about four hours. So it is, it is possible, but you wanna make sure that you're comfortable with the product and you've used it. Um, oh, thanks, Wanda. Oh, hey, I didn't even know you were watching today. All right, so we've got everything. I'm gonna pull you guys back so you guys can um, kinda see how the overall look's gonna end up being. Here we go. So it looks like I just missed that spot painting it where I've got the mousse, but. You can see this side over here that's totally dry. I did that before I did the live today. Kind of how that's streaked out. And then this is the side that we did today and how it's drying here. So you can kind of see how that kind of comes together. All right, and I am gonna go ahead and one last thing here. So I really should wipe around here but I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on. I don't have my hammer in here. I didn't think I was gonna get to this step, um, but I will hammer this down really well. Otherwise, you'll get that little leathery film thing over there if you've got any air seeping in. Just a tip also, sometimes I do put my container, if I don't feel like I have a great seal, I do put it in a Ziploc bag sometimes and, keep, and push the air out of it, um, and that'll help keep from getting that little leather leather spot as well. So I am just up with my time now. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. And oh, Amber, she asked if I was gonna seal the silk paint. So yes, um, because I sell it. I have done a couple pieces um, where I've kind of tested them out and, and not sealed it, and I actually have not had any issues, um, just to kind of see. But I just, I feel better with the sealer on it. Um, like I said, I sell. If I wasn't selling, then I 
probably wouldn't. Like if I was keeping it in my home, I wouldn't. Unless I wanted to change the sheen, which I never do a high gloss, so I wouldn't want to change the sheen. Um, I like what it has on it here that is natural with the silk. Um, but selling, yes. Let's see. They actually sell wood conditioner. It's not a Dixie Bell product, um, but you can buy it at like Lowe's or Home Depot. It's kind of where the Minwax stuff is. Um, and you just put it on, you wait about 15 minutes, and then you can put your stain over it. A lot of times it'll, when you do that, it gets a, it takes the stain a little more evenly and you can get like a, a deep, to me the stain already has a deep reach look, but it does, it, it looks a little bit different. Um, there are times when I do condition my wood, but for the most part, I don't. Um, but I do strip everything and then I usually use a 220 grit sandpaper to smooth it out so it has a nice smooth feel and that's another thing with the silk too you can take like a high grit sandpaper um we have the rad pads I might have yeah I do so rad pads um this comes in grits from I think it's 150 yeah well 120 to 600 um, so you can see, you just cut them up. They last a long time. They're a little higher quality than the regular, um, sandpaper that you get. It's got a spongy side. Um, I usually do use like a forest 600 grit and I'll just run it right over this. It'll help, um, a little bit. Make like, it almost helps with the colors coming together a little bit more. Um, and then also it gives it that really nice smooth feel. That's how you get rid of the chalk feel with your CMP paint too. 600 grit sandpaper, you just go whoosh, whoosh, and that's it. And it'll, it just, I've done it already on this piece back here. I'm not sure. I did this on a live on the Dixie Bell Paint Company page. I'm still working on it, but I've already done it on here. And you know how you get that really dry feel? If you do that with the sandpaper, that's going to give you that nice smooth finish that everybody who feels your furniture asks how you got it. That's it. It's super easy. Um, but anyway, I kind of got off track there. Thanks again for watching. Um, please like my page, follow me on Facebook, and you guys have an awesome rest of your day and um, a wonderful weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye.